the wrist and hand should be placed in an anatomically neutral position. Potentially constrictive materials, such as stockinette, should be avoided for this procedure. Cast padding may be applied to the extremity to meet treatment goals, or if it's a fresh fracture, to accommodate anticipated swelling. Let's get started. Select an appropriate width of the 3M splinting material based on the size of the patient's wrist. Material that is about one inch wider than the patient's wrist is a good rule of thumb. Measure and cut the splint so the length measures from the patient's elbow to the distal palmar crease. To protect the patient's skin from the exposed knit fiberglass edge of the splint, open either side of the seam and peel the felt back. Expose the knit fiberglass and trim one quarter inch from either end of the splint. Remember to wear examination gloves during direct contact with uncured resin of knit fiberglass. Next, you need to wet the splint. To wet the splint, immerse it in a bucket of water and blot off excess water in a towel. Using water that's room temperature provides approximately three minutes of molding time. To extend the working time, use cooler water. Once your splint is wet and excess water has been removed, Apply the splint starting at the distal palmar crease, allowing it to follow the natural contours of the forearm. Now start overwrapping the splint using 3M Coban self-adherent wrap. Alternatives could be bias-cut stockinette or an ACE elastic bandage. Begin wrapping at the wrist, working up toward the distal palmar crease. Then, wrap proximally, overlapping each rotation by 50%. Mold the palm of the splint by holding the patient's thumb between your thumb and forefinger and pressing the ball of your hand into the palm of the splint. Keep the arm still for three to four minutes to ensure the splint sets. The splint will be fully cured within 20 minutes.